Hello and welcome to episode 43 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about that something that became widely accepted early in the cloud computing era was that an organization that uses multi-providers should be able to save money. However, in reality, the opposite is often true. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips on cloud computing. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on another C-Suite show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And so complexity costs money, you would have thunk it. Yeah, absolutely. We just need a, a few more layers and we'll save a lot more money. That's right. <laughs> so a, a great opening question then, Dave. In your experience, how do you see leaders are doing a better job to control the costs? I think the big thing is ask the questions to the IT people. I think they, uh, they kind of run with the assumption that cloud computing, including multi-cloud and hybrid cloud, are going to you know, save them money. And, and chances are it will save them money. But you have to figure out how to model the metrics in terms of how you're going to measure success. And what, what's happening now is that people are just you know, tossing out multi-cloud solutions willy-nilly. They're you know, leveraging Azure and AWS and Google Cloud Platform and perhaps Alibaba. And they're realizing that this is causing a lot of complexity, a lot of additional management, a lot of additional personnel they need to hire to a lot of additional security to get kind of everything under control. And we kind of knew this for a long time. And But the providers and the people who are selling these cloud management platforms, these governance platforms are, you know, kind of uh, selling the enterprises a bill of goods that this is always going to lead to, um, you know, fewer costs, less headaches, things like that. The reality is that it leads to more agility, which leads to more value for the company. It leads to the ability to do your job better. It leads to the ability to have choice for the developers, lots of things. But it may not lead to initial cost savings to the point that everybody is really kind of assuming. And so you have to figure out the value points in terms of where this technology can take you and look at the bigger picture and not necessarily worry about the ops cost stuff. But you should have visibility into what things are going to cost. It should never be a surprise. And so the ability to price these things, the ability to put cost governance systems in, the ability to put cloud business offices in the uh, organizations to monitor costs, negotiate the contracts with the providers. I mean, all these things should be, you know, table stakes and moving in the cloud. But enterprises have, you know, it's new technology. They're not necessarily paying attention to the money as much as they should. And then suddenly, you know, the CEOs are getting these bills that they didn't think they would be getting. And which if you're a CEO, you're worried about earnings per share and quarter on quarter growth, and that stuff can affect the bottom line. And that's going to be tough to explain to the shareholders on the, on the quarterly call. Yeah, it certainly would be. That's a, an uncomfortable conversation, isn't it? Well, we've, we've got you know, multiple clouds. We don't know what the outcomes will be, and uh, we've just looked at the bills. Here you go. <laughs> Not very good. And you're right, it's it's driven by outcomes. So, I mean, you know, identifying where the best investment in, not only, you know, financial investment, uh, the financial investment behind cloud and, and choosing the right cloud platform or maybe another platform to run alongside it, but equally the training needs. I think there's a major misunderstanding sometimes of, about how much ongoing training is, uh, that, that's needed. We often talk about that in the training shows, but I think it's uh, an important, certainly an important factor when it comes to managing the, the overall cost of a project. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, the thing is, you got to consider the fact we're making a systemic change to IT as we know it and nothing, nothing less than that. And so this is going to be costly in terms of risk, in terms of the amount of money you have to pay, in terms of training, consulting dollars, the ability to kind of get the right talent you need to really kind of make this stuff happen. And you have to be honest with yourself as to what that transformation is going to cost. But the thing is, if you look at it as a tactical kind of operational kind of thing and you, you count every penny, it's just never going to happen. I mean, this, this stuff has to be lubricated by lots of cash. It's the only way it works. And I think the, the CEOs and the CIOs and the CFOs, you know, really need to understand that. But by the way, that doesn't mean you give the CIO and the development teams and the cloud teams blank checks. Never do that. But you just work with them so they become more cognizant of how to measure the cost of this stuff, how to size it up, and how to push this stuff out and make it more, you know, um, you know, make it more understandable in terms of how the shareholders are going to accept this stuff. If there's a surprise, you're, you're going to get in trouble. You should get fired um, because 
these things are completely measurable. The tools and technologies are completely known in how you do this. It's just a matter of doing the upfront work, the planning, the ongoing operational stuff, the ongoing cost analytics, and then reporting that to your leadership. Um, it's something that was very, you know, uh, few and far between five years ago. Uh, it's absolutely necessary now. Yeah, there, there is, there is, and there has been, and there always will be that element of risk. And I think it's uh, not only from a, a financial point of view, but there's so many things that impact it. I mean, we just did the Australia show and, and spoke about regulations and how they can affect organisations just literally uh, almost overnight. Um, and not having some sort of a fallover process to back you up is is just you know so it's it's very interesting and we could we could talk about this for for absolute for absolute hours whether we'd have any viewers at the end of it I don't know but I'm sure we'd we'd thoroughly enjoy ourselves it moves us on nicely to your top three tips around this subject though so we'd love to hear them yeah number one keep an eye on the business cases um, that's cases plural not just business case so in other words what are we doing for the business. You know, that's something we're going to have to determine and report to the board. But the, the business case is the ability to kind of improve inventory control, the ability to sell more, the ability to increase operational effectiveness, the ability to increase factory for efficiency. I mean, all these really what I call micro business cases that kind of, you know, fold up to a macro business case are very important. And the thing is, I want to know that stuff as a cloud professional because I'm looking to, in essence, make the business better. And if, if these metrics aren't necessarily reported to me and understood, and these business cases aren't understood within the people who are building the cloud, um, your chances are you're not going to meet the expectations because you're not living up to the tactical, the detailed stuff that really kind of needs to run the business. Leverage cost governance and reporting. Can't stress this enough. I mean, there's a bunch of governance systems out there. Um, you know, we had the CTO, one of the better ones out there. We had, you know, this cloud cruiser. Um, there's other kinds of tools out there you can leverage and the reality is that they're not only provide you with the ability to kind of control costs but the ability to kind of report what things are costing and so if you have a very complex multi-cloud environment you can set up the models and they can tell you what you're paying who's using what you, know, you can show back charge back you can see where you're spending the money and that's very important in terms of your ability to kind of gather metrics going forward you don't know uh, how to improve things unless you're kind of monitoring the way things are going. And make sure to negotiate the correct deals with the providers. I mean, I love having a CBO because I hate, you know, these endless calls with lawyers and negotiating these license agreements, um, you know, with these cloud providers and software providers and things like that. You need professionals on staff to go ahead and make those happen. And the reality is that they can negotiate 40% down on the costs. And so if you're paying, you know, $10 million a month, which a lot of enterprises are these days, you know, they can get you down to six. And I think that's a, that's a very good investment to be made going forward. The IT folks, even the CIOs are not good at negotiating stuff. They just don't know the process. They don't know legalities. They don't have a legal team. Uh, so give it up and let the, the business professionals get, you know, create a cloud business office that they're doing this for you because it'll save you millions. And it's something that can really go right to the bottom line. Yeah, sure can. Great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks for that. My pleasure. Yeah, I just want to add to that as well. You're saying about it's it's cost saving, and, and this is all around. This show's all been around to sort of maybe for the attention of the CFO on this one and the CIO, but um, it's all around cost saving. But essentially, deploying something that's going to give you the the governance control and identifying the weaknesses and the strengths of the usage of cloud within an organisation, not only from a, a cost saving point of view, but also from an opportunity to show where we need to where revenue can be increased, and also being able to go back with the metrics to the board and saying look, we require a second round of funding or whatever round of funding you're in in order to, to bolster the business and, and put it in the right focus. Yeah, it's absolutely, you, you said it, that's a, that's a, a great statement. So the, the, the ability to kind of understand that this needs to be a dashboard for the business and this needs to be something that's on the dashboard that everybody has an eye on is something that needs to be brought up. And, and this is something I mention to boards and CEOs all the time. And the reality is that they don't necessarily like monitoring IT. They think it's a cost and not an expense. It's not strategic for the organization. But you better get out of that mode of thinking because the um, organizations out there where IT is strategic to them, uh, you know, the Airbnbs and the Netflix of the world and all the other thousands of analogs that are basically out there to be competitive with you, you know, they're going to show up and eat your lunch within your industry. And I think we're going to see a you know great wasteland of companies and brands you know, that have been, um, you know, household words for the last hundred years that are kind of, um, you know, being sold and put away because 
these disruptors are going to get into the space and leverage technology to, in essence, push them out of the market. So you might as well prepare for the battle, and now's the time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for being part of another C-Suite show. I really enjoyed this one this week. Yeah, always a pleasure, man. Excellent, and thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all the other social media platforms as well. Check us out. We're everywhere. Stitcher, iTunes as well. You can get all of these uh, as podcasts. You don't have to just watch Dave and I every week, which I'm, I'm sure you love to do. But we are just in an audio program as well. So if you're on your way to work and, and you don't want to be seen watching the show, you can obviously listen to the show. Uh, so so look, remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the future shows coming up every week and look forward to catching up with you all next week.